up. So today we are going to be tackling a renovation project in our kitchen. We are going to be adding some much needed counter space and I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna do this. Don't mind Kiwi eating breakfast here, but yesterday we went to Habitat for Humanity and got this gorgeous dresser. It's got tons of drawers. They very easily slide out. There's tons of storage in here. And we got six of these knobs that we are replacing these guys with. These guys are pretty and everything, but this is more the style that I'm going for. We had to drill different holes for them since these guys were wider than these. And Hobby Lobby only had six of them available, so I'll just have to watch to see when they get more in. So we could totally tackle this in a traditional sense and get the unfinished kitchen cabinets from Lowe's or Home Depot, but we wanted to go a little bit more unique with this project. So we've got the dresser here and that's just over five feet. And this whole kitchen breakfast nook area is eight feet wide. And then over here where this big pile of stuff that didn't fit in the cabinet, is we are going to be building a shelf system, an open shelving system that I can store my pressure canner in some bigger pots. We also the other day added this guy here that I absolutely love. It was super simple and pretty affordable to do and it adds a ton of storage to the area. But we are going to get two 2x12s to put as the countertops. We could totally go butcher block and get the pre-made butcher block from Home Depot, but an eight foot piece of that runs about $300, whereas we are going to do two two by 12s and that is like $25. So it's a huge savings. The trade-off is that the two by 12s are soft wood instead of hardwood, which you would normally want for countertops, but I'm not gonna be using this as a traditional like butcher block. Like I'm not gonna be using it as a cutting board. And we have a dining table that's made out of that same lumber and it's held up really nicely. And I even kind of like some of the imperfections that comes with the dings and dents that kind of show up as you use it. It adds personality. So that's what we're gonna do because for that big of a price difference, I'm willing to try it out. So I thought I'd take you along on the ride in case you guys are looking for a unique solution and a cheap solution to add personality and functionality to your kitchen. So we're gonna try and get to Home Depot to get the materials that we need before the rain starts, hopefully. So let's go try and beat the rain. You want John's coffee? Yeah.
at that moment that we realized that this board here was a little bowed, so it created quite the gap on the ends down here and over there, not allowing this front board to sit flat against it. So we had to come up with a solution, and what we did was just took John's multi-tool uh, like grinder and trimmed away some of this backboard here to allow this to kind of sit in like a groove that we made. It wasn't the best solution. The best solution would be to make sure that your boards are square beforehand with a planer, but we don't have a planer. So this was just kind of like on the fly. This backboard was already screwed down and we didn't want to take it out and mess things up further. So we just did what we could with the multi-tool and the sander and just made it work with a lot of trial and error until the front board sat as flat as it could be. But like I said, this counter was like $25 instead of $300. So we were gonna make this work regardless. <laughs> The finished product is behind me. I love it so much. I'm so happy with the way that it turned out. So let me turn this camera around and explain to you a little bit about each of the steps we took to get there. So here, don't mind the mess. I made brownies last night and we're still figuring out where things are gonna go. But this is the final product. We've got the dresser here. I'm just waiting to find more of the poles here so we can replace these so they're all this uniform twisted pull here. We've got our countertop and we did use clear caulk in the seam just so it doesn't get any crumbs and stuff in it. This whole window area will be getting a complete overhaul and the walls will be painted. This area will have more countertop. We're going to be putting our fridge here. Lots more to come, but basically what we did is we put the dresser here and then we built this little section here. So we have a four by four leg here and here and then along the wall holding up the counter, we put a two by four along the wall this way and along the wall that way. And then the countertop is sitting essentially, if you see underneath, there's let's see a two by four here and then two by four there and along there. And then we did the same thing for the bottom. We basically just made a two by four frame. So there's a two by four there along the side, back and along this side. And then more of this same counter material is sitting on the bottom there to make that shelf. And I will be figuring out how high I want the shelf because primarily I wanna be able to store this pressure canner and it's super tall, but I do wanna eventually put a shorter second shelf up there to keep things like canning jars and stuff like that. But in here, right now we have say like our silverware and over here I have all of my canning lids and supplies. We have a ton of room for towels and just absolutely ton of storage. All in all, the dresser was the ex most expensive part, but you can find really cheap ones at thrift stores or on Facebook Marketplace. We found ours at Habitat for Humanity, ran about $90 after tax and all that. And then after that, the most expensive part was honestly the paint. I had no idea that paint now costs $50 a gallon. I don't know if it was just because it was cabinet paint or what, but other than that, the materials were super cheap. The other cabinet, like I said, was just two by fours and four by fours, super cheap, super simple. And the countertop was two by twelves, which run 
Um, an eight foot piece is maybe like $12 a piece and we used two of them. However, we did have to get the longer ones because our space is a little bit wider than eight feet, but it's a lot better than the alternative, which is $300 for an eight foot piece of butcher block countertop. So there's lots more to come in this renovation over here. And with the rest of the kitchen renovation, we just put in our order for our dishwasher. I'm so excited. We haven't had a dishwasher since we've lived here because the one behind me, doesn't work and it's super gross. I wouldn't want to use it anyways. I am so excited with how this came out. It adds so much usable counter space, which we didn't have. If you see the counter behind me, it was like a little counter space there and a little space of counter here. It's just, there's no room to work. So with eight feet of continuous counter space, it makes the kitchen so much more functional. So if you are interested in seeing how the rest of this kitchen turns up, because we are going to be doing some pretty unique and beautiful things that are a little bit different than a traditional kitchen renovation, then stay tuned for that because I can't wait to see how this kitchen turns out. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you got an idea of for something that you could do in your own kitchen and add a little bit of personality and functionality to your kitchen. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.